Итак, друзья, привет. Сегодня у нас очередной разговор о виски в компании, да, в компании Никиты Курочкина, Стивена Вудхока, представителя винокурни Глен Морей и меня, Евгения Скурихина. Предлагаю не затягивать долго со вступительными словами и сразу же передать слово гостю. Стивен, welcome, great to see you here. Uh, please introduce yourself for a few words for start. Thank you, no problem, and it's lovely to be here. Thank you so much for the kind invite. Um, as as uh, you know, you, you've, you've mentioned in my my introduction what I could pick up. Um, my name is Stephen Woodcock. So I'm, I'm head of whiskey creation um, for uh, La Martinique uh, Bardano, based uh, between um, Glen Murray, uh, where I am today, on the uh, in, in the middle of Speyside. Uh, a very, very rich whiskey country, and I also um, have uh, responsibility down in Bathgate as well, in, in the south of Scotland, where we have um, a large grain uh, distillery as well. I have uh, come to uh, Le Martiniquez from uh, Distel, and prior to that, I worked for a number of years with, with Diageo. Uh, can you explain your whiskey way in the industry? Of, uh, sure. With details, please. Yeah, sure. It, it was um, so I, I I didn't start immediately uh, in the whiskey industry. So I was uh, I, I I was a, a chemist to trade, and <clears throat> I spent many years in the the chemical industry. And and an opportunity came along to uh, join Diageo and work at uh, a now closed distillery port Port Dundas, which was in the the centre of Glasgow. So. Um, Whiskey distillation is a chemical process like any other, so it was it was very easy to understand. Um, but I did wonder whether or not I was always destined um, to, to, to work in the industry. My father uh, had his own had his own pub, his own bar, and uh, my mother also worked in the industry for over forty years. So um, there was a, a rich family history there. But um, I started at, at Port and Das. I, I worked between grain distilling and coopering, so the manufacture of of, of barrels and casks. And uh, that, that, when that distillery closed, um, I then get the opportunity to move uh, to Speyside. So I was offered an opportunity to manage a distillery, um, Inch Gower Distillery on Speyside. And, uh, and, and my family and I moved to, to Elgin from, from the Glasgow area, where we still stay now. So being based at Glen Murray now is fantastic because I'm only five minutes from home. It's a, a very short journey in the morning. And from... Um, Inch Gower, I, because Diageo own so many distilleries, you get a great opportunity to move around um, so many distilleries and, and you get to understand how the process operates, how with only three raw materials you can make such a variety of different characters and styles. Um, and, and so that gave me a, a great deal of experience through Speyside and I, I worked my way down to um, uh, Blair Athel Distillery in Pitlochry, which is more heading towards the, the, the south again. And it was whilst at uh, Blair Athel, I get the opportunity to join um, Distel, looking after their three distilleries. And, and that was uh, Deanston, um, near Stirling, Bunaha, the famous Bunahaben on, on the Isle of Isla, and uh, Tobermory Distillery on the Isle of Mull. So you, I was able to take the experience I had gained as a, as a distillery manager and, and, and learn how different styles and techniques, you know, are, are employed to make different types of character, uh, whiskey characters. And, uh, and, and, and so I was with them for, for nearly five years before uh, I get the opportunity to move to move to, to La Martini Quez, which, uh, which was a fantastic opportunity and, and one that was too good to say no to. So that's a kind of rough, um, just a rough run over of, of, of my, my journey in whiskey. Great, great experience. Thank you. Thank uh, you. By, You're welcome. By, by the way, our ex ambassador of Ochentoshan, uh, Gordon Dundas. Ah, <laughs> the yes. Same, the same yes. name as a distiller. And I, I, I have a bottle of uh, Dundas uh, whiskey, grain whiskey, 39 years old. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Lovely. That's uh, that, that beats the oldest expression I have of poured and dust. The oldest expression I have is a 19, but it's it's beautiful. It's a very, very nice very single grain. Nice. Yeah. So next question. Do you have a such kind of mentor or maybe a hero in the whiskey world? 
Well, it's it's a bit of a, 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 a boring answer, I suppose. I don't have one standout. Um, what I do enjoy about the, the industry is that whilst, uh, you know, we have, we have a number of companies and, and, and everyone as, as a business uh, are, are in competition, um, you know, we, we, we all chat, we all talk, um, you know, and, 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 you know, I've made a great many friends in the industry over the years. And the thing I like most about whiskey is you should learn something almost every day. You know, whether you're, you're, you're talking to an ex-colleague or a current colleague or, you know, it's, it's, just, uh, it's just enjoying a, a, a dram with, uh, you know, at the end of the day with a friend, you should always. So it's, it's, it's picking up these, these small pieces of information, the small parts of knowledge over the years that, that build up, you know, the, the, the knowledge you have and, 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 and allow you to contribute to a business the way you do. So I, I, there's been no real, um, you know, real, real icons, if you like, but lots and lots of people, too many to mention, where, you know, you learn something different um, almost every day. You know, every day, we, we, well, I have a saying, certainly, that every day within whiskey should be a school day. You should learn, learn something new. The minute I think you, uh, I think the minute you, you, you think you know all in whiskey, you've, you've lost the game. You know, you should always be looking to learn, always looking to move on. And uh, so consequently, uh, I'm, I'm kind of hoping, I'm, I'm racking my brains to see what I learned today, just in case you ask them. I mean, I'm trying to think if there was anything new today, but but certainly, you know, when you're looking at, um, you know, looking at different cast types and looking at how different spirit types interact, we, we wouldn't think, there's always something to learn. And I think that's the value. I think whiskey itself, the industry is the gift. And I think if you embrace that, then then you know you, you will forever learn, you will forever develop, you will forever ever move on. And and I think you know I think when when I think many of of, of my uh, colleagues within the industry would agree with that. It's it doesn't matter what company you work with, you, you can always pick up the phone, have a chat. If you have a question to ask or something to learn, um, you know there, there there are no huge secrets in, in, in that respect. We all, uh, we all have a great deal of respect for one another and quite happy to have, to, have, to have some really good conversations. But yeah, so many colleagues over the years that I've learned so much from, but, but it's, it's, that's, that's the, the, the great thing about the industry. Mm, very cool, very cool. So uh, about your previous stage, about the Stell period yeah. in your life, uh, you mentioned uh, Bunahavan, Dinston, yes. and Tobermory. Uh, which yes. one is your favorite? <laughs> That's not fair. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like it's like asking which one, um, which, which one's your favorite child. Um, it, it, it was each one brought something different to the, to the party, um, you know, and, and it's probably a reasonably well rehearsed answer because it's the one I've been asked probably the most was which one I, I, I like the most. Um, I was based at Deanston and spent a long time at Deanston. And, and the thing I like about Deanston is, uh, is it's quite, a, whilst everyone does the same thing, we all, you know, we all take free raw materials and, and they're all mashed, they're all fermented, they're all distilled. Um, you know, it's, it's the unique nature of how those processes are carried out per distillery that give you the unique characters. And, and Deanston has a unique character and, and it's one that's, that's uh, you know, it's easy to it's easy to get wrong. It's easy for 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 the spirit not to be quite in character. So it's it's a challenging process and 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 one that I enjoyed working with and working on to to, to get right. Um, but Bunahaban, for example, I mean it speaks for itself. You know, it's, it's, it's absolute beautiful liquids that that come out of Bunahaban. Um, so you know, rather than focus too much in the process. Think very much more about the, the liquid and, and Tobermory. What a beautiful location! You know, it, it's what a place. I, I, I be three beautiful locations I could go to work of a day, and uh, and 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 I'm certainly uh, you know I'm envious of that. I mean, Brendan, who now has my role, has uh, three lovely locations where he can turn up and and, and go to work. So you, you love each one for a very very different reason, but you wouldn't want love one more than more than the other. That wouldn't have been fair. Okay. Okay. One extra question. Uh, have you heard about that Heineken talks to buy majority of diesel? I have. And I only heard I only heard that yesterday. So um I've spoken Is it to good or not? I, I, it's difficult to say. I, I I don't know enough about Heineken. I don't think Heineken own any whiskey interests. So it's it's interesting what's driving the the 
the, 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 the chat at the minute, but um, it's very, very fresh news. So it'll be very interesting to see how it, how it unfolds. Um, you know, it's, it's certainly a, a great company uh, with a great heritage and a great pedigree to, to, to buy into. So, um, you know, anyone who buys the company can't be, can't be doing, uh, wouldn't be doing anything. Uh, um, I, 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 there certainly won't be any mistakes to be made. I think, you know, in terms of the whiskey, which I was most familiar with, um, as well as the South African brands as well, they're, they're, they're iconic brands and, and, and I'm quite sure whoever buys the company will treat them with the respect they deserve. Mm, but you. it is interesting, so I'm interested to see how it unfolds. Okay, so what was the reason you to leave the distal? It, it was, do you know, sometimes um, you, you just know it's, it's, it's the right time to move on, but... Um, I had been doing, looking after the, the, the three distilleries um, for, for a, a number of years, and the opportunity came when my colleague, uh, Kirsty McCallum, moved on. I, I moved, as well as looking after the distillery, started to take a bit more of an interest and in, in responsibility for um, the, uh, the, the, the whiskey making, so the blending, excuse me, the looking after the inventory. And, and I found that that role um, hugely time consuming. I had a fantastic team and, and you know, there's uh, some, some very talented people there, um, you know, and, and, and the, the master blender there now, Julianne Fernandez, is a, a, a very, very bright future in front of her without a shadow of a doubt. And, and, you know, moving into that, I learned a lot from her, learned a lot about managing stocks, learned a lot about how blending operates. And, 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 and I moved, you know, when, when you, when you, um, you know, when you get the opportunity to do something new and it grabs you, then I, I knew that was something that, that I was really going to enjoy. And, and, and when the opportunity came uh, with, uh, with LMB to, to do that on a more permanent basis and, and, and worry less um, about, about oper you know, the, the distillery operation, then it was, uh, it was too good an opportunity to say no. There were other things in the background as well, of course, and, and, and of course the opportunity to now work in, in, in this fantastic facility only five minutes from home rather than, you know, having to commute a um, couple of hundred miles every week. Um, and, and, you know, I've been in operations and running distilleries an awful long time and distilleries, um, you know, they run 24 hours a day, some run seven days a week. And, and strangely enough, they always choose to go wrong in the middle of the night. I don't know why that is, but that's when they choose to go wrong. So it's, it's not having that operational um, responsibility as well is quite nice now, because it means I can go home of an evening, I can have a dram, and I know the phone isn't going to ring at 3 a.m. because something has gone wrong in a distillery. So there was a, a bit of that as well. It's, I've, been in, I've been in distilling a long time. It's, uh, the, 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 the white hair shows that the, it, it takes its toll a bit. So it was quite nice to move away from that too. But, but you know, it's, uh, I, I, I never leave... Um, a company in bad terms or anything like that. I, you know, Diageo was fantastic for me. I learned so much and, and Distel um, as well. Three iconic brands, a, a fantastic team I worked with and, and, and I do miss it. But, um, you know, you know you know for yourself when it's right to move on and, and it felt right, um, you know, to, to, to go and take on a new challenge and try something new. Mm, okay. By the way, uh, can you already compare the style of work Distel and uh, La Martinicas. Yeah, I, I mean, it's 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 here. It's I, I think it would be fair to say it's, it's less corporate. It's a bit more relaxed. Um, you, you have a lot more freedom, I suppose, to make decisions, and and with with that comes the responsibility of not making mistakes as well. So the, the, there is that very um, very defined difference, and I think. You know, you find, especially in a bit of a creative role, you find that, that, that you can tend to be a bit more creative and, and, and a bit freer when, when you don't quite have that, that kind of corporate feel to it. Um, you know, you so in, in that respect, I, I enjoy that, um, that element very, very much. Um, so it's, it's quite good. But there are, I think, two, two clear differences in my mind. Mm -hmm. The last question is about Distel, and it's a very important question for us. Uh, uh, Distel is quite strong at wine market. Did you yeah. work with wine casks? What wine is more comfortable for whiskey finishing? And your opinion about uh, wine finish? Yeah, it's well. Do you know, it's it's something that um, I'm keen that whiskey doesn't stand still. I think it's important to uh, retain tradition. I think that's hugely important. We we cannot forget where we come from. Um, 
but equally, we need to move forward. And, and, and so I like, and, and we'll come on to, um, uh, you know, certainly with Glenn Murray, but I like the notion that, you know, there was freedom to experiment with casks at Distel. Um, but yes, so, so wine, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, Distel are a huge vintner. Um, the great thing about Deanston in particular in, 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 with the three distilleries was it's a very, very adaptable spirit. It works well with a variety of finishes. Um, you know, the whiskey really sings, whether it's um, sherry, whether it's, whether it's wine, whether it was beer or ale. Uh, you know, it, it, it worked really well. And, and certainly work I was doing with Julianne uh, before I left, you know, we, we, we would allocate a part of, of, of our budget every year for experimental casks. We would sit down, look at what casks we had available, kind of blue sky, think where they would go with each spirit type, and then uh, look at what we would go and buy and, and, and lay these casks down. So I'm... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sad that I won't see some of them come to fruition, but, but I'm quite sure that, that I'll be lucky enough. If I, if I, if I keep in Julianne's good books, I may get some uh, whiskies to try when they're eventually ready. But on, on, on wine, the adaptability of, of Deanston, um, I, I don't know if you tried it. There was a 2008 um, nine-year uh, Bordeaux, Bordeaux. Uh, finish, mm -hmm. and, and I thought that was absolutely beautiful. It, it allowed, you know, allowed both the, the, the cask and the spirit to, to, to really sing and work well together. As I say, you know, there's, there's always, with Deanston, always comes these quite honeyed, um, fruity, sweet, barley sugar type notes. And it seemed to really work well with the cash. You know, there was hints of strawberry there, there were, there were raspberry there, there was hints of chocolate, sherry peel, it, was, it, was, it really, really worked well. Um, so I think I'm, I'm, I'm trying to rack my brain while I talk through this to see whether there was any wine, wine expressions I can remember with, with Tobermory or, 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 or Buna Haben, but I don't think so. But, but the Bordeaux really stuck um, in my mind with, with Distel. It was a beautiful finish. Worked really well. So let's move on. Uh, did you try Glenmorey whiskey before you joined the company? Yeah, yeah, I was familiar with Glen Murray. I mean, Glen Murray, um, living in Elgin, you know, and, and it's it's the there are a number of distilleries um, um, surrounding Elgin, but, but Glen Murray's right in the heart of the town, and, and I only live five minutes away. So it's uh, having having lived and, and worked in Elgin for, for a long time, it's impossible not to uh, at least have tried the the twelve or the classic, and 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 you know the great thing. Um, I like about it is, is it's it's you know it's quintessentially it's, it's it's Speyside to me you know it's it's light um, it's fruity it's it's easy to drink you know and and, and it works so well uh, with the bourbon wood that, that that we mature it in um, so yeah I, I was not with the whole range of of you know subsequently become much more familiar with the range since I've joined the company but uh, but but certainly the classic and the twelve you know they're they're, they're really good standard space sides um, and, and and very enjoyable whiskies. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, an expression is the legacy of uh, Dr. Bill Ramsden still actual for the distillery and whiskey? Will you consider yeah. the experience of previous master of Glenmorey? Well, I think I think the thing that's important is that you know everyone um, who comes to work in this role or any other role is is only a custodian of the distillery. You know, we have we have we have whiskey uh, maturing in casks that that, that Kirsty will have laid down, that, that Graham will have laid down prior to her, and Bill will have laid down. So I, I think that it's it's very important to preserve the legacy of others. Um, you know, and Ed Dodson as well, dare I forget Ed. Um, and, and consequently, so you want to leave your own legacy. Um, you know, you want to try something new, but I think we preserve the legacy of, of, of others by, um, you know, carrying on the, uh, you know, attempt at, you know, buying, buying, trying Glen Murray Spirit in new casks, you know, trying something different, always trying something experimental. And I think, you know, moving away from the standard heritage and classic ranges, um, you know, the, the, the curiosity offerings and the Warehouse One offerings hold true to that tradition and that legacy. Um, and, and that's something that, that I'll certainly be, be hoping to do. You know, we've, we've got some interesting casks um, on order, um, you know, and, and we do have, and I know you have a question about finishing, so I'll, I'll, I, won't, I won't talk too much about it at the minute, but 
Um, you know, we have a lot of interesting things that we want to try and, and, and you know, different types of cast, different sizes, different finishes. And I think that that's the legacy that's important to preserve. And then hopefully when I eventually move on, whenever that happens to be, I'll have left a, a legacy again of, of some experimental casks that again stay in the, the tradition of, 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 of the curiosity and warehouse one offerings. Mm. Okay, okay. Uh, by the way, uh, what about place of uh, Glenmorey Distillery in the market and uh, Glenmorey yeah. whiskey on the shelf? Yeah, so <clears throat> what I think is important about, about Glenmorey is I think it's, it's very accessible. Do you know, it's, it's not going to be the most expensive whiskey, and the, but, but do you know, we have the volume that, that we have a presence in most, if not all, supermarket shelves. And, and I think that's hugely important. I think as, as tastes change, um, you know, as tastes change and, and people and, and tastes evolve, uh, you know, more and more people may want to move from, from blends and, 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 and try, you know, a, a single malt. And, and there may always be that fear that you spend far too much money in your first single malt. So it's quite nice to have, um, you know, you have the, the or certainly as Martini Kez, we, we, we have our own blends, of course, but if you can move to Glen Murray and, uh, you know, try something along the classic range, whether it's the, um, you know, whether it's the, 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 the Glen Murray classic or the, the, the Chardonnay or whether it's the, the Port Wood. And, uh, do you know, if, if you like that, then you can spend a, a little bit more. You can take the next step up and go to the Heritage range, the 12, the 15, the 18, the 21, all absolutely beautiful whiskies. And I think it's nice that Glen Murray can, can afford people that opportunity, afford that entry level single malt. And if you like it, well, do you know, there's going to be something similar at the next price point up or another whiskey producer at the next price point up. So um, I think that's, I, I think that's very, very important, you know, and, and it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's certainly a, um, a certain, I think it's certainly an evolution within whiskey that, that's been quite important. You know, a lot of companies have moved to the non-age stated piece to give that, that the opportunity to move up from blends to single malts. And, and, and I see um, Glen Murray very much as a key player in that area. Okay, uh, maybe you can name uh, key competitors. Um, well, do you know, you, it, it, it's, you're always looking, um, you're going to be looking around about Speyside. I mean, Diageo have, have a number of offerings. Um, you know, you're looking at Glenlivet as, 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 as a competitor as well. So, uh, you know, you only need to wander along the, the, the supermarkets and see the, the range of, of, of whiskies that are there to see. You know, it's, it's such a competitive market. And it's, like I say, I think... I, I think personally, I think Glen Glen Murray stands out as a you know as, as something that sits at that accessible price price point. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Off top question: What's your favorite single malt from each region of Scotland from the competitors? <laughs> no, that, that that is a very very good question. So um, I, I think would be my favourite, so I think, I think you had that, that the question might come up, what, what was one of my favourites with the Stella? I mean, if I was to go to, to Isla um, to start with, um, the, 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 the Buna Haben 18 is, is incredibly difficult to beat, I think. You know, I've got a soft spot um, for uh, uh, sherry uh, whiskies and, and, and 18 years in, in first fill Oloroso is just absolutely beautiful. Um, I think if I was to go over to uh, Campbellton, um, you know, a, a spring bank or a, a, a Glen Scotia, you're, you're not going to really go particularly wrong with. I, I, I do enjoy the odd uh, peated expression. Um, coming up to Speyside, that's quite... Now, it's, it's interesting. So... Um, it's a kind of heart and head here thing, I suppose. I, I do have a very soft spot for, for, for the Angower flora and fauna. It was my first distillery um, on Speyside, and, and I happen to think it's a, it's a very underrated dram. So um, I, I, I do enjoy that. Um, Highland, uh, what would we have in Highland that would be Glen Goyne? Quite nice. Aye, Highland's not Lowland. Glen Goyne Lowland. Well, Glen Goyne oh, Highland. 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 Aye, 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 Glen Goyne Highland. Um, so quite partial to a, to a Glen Goyne. Um, in the Lowlands, there's not that much to speak. But I will then. So I, I will stick with my Portland Dash single grain 
for, mm. for the Lowlands. If it was a mall, then then I'm, I am partial to a, uh, an odd Glenkinchy. So um, I think, did I cover them all off there? I think I did. I think I did. Oh, cool. thank you. Thank you so Tough much. Tough question. That was one I hadn't rehearsed. <laughs> so next question is quite big. We have heard that though, what finishing of whiskey is just a way to hide, just a regular, yeah. if not to say bad, spirit under influence of new casks. Yeah. On the other hand, lots of people think finishing is just a marketing tool which allows to attract consumers' attention without any significant influence of the whiskey itself. What is your opinion on the topic? I, do you know you could split opinion on that, and, and it is an excellent question. So um, I'll be perfectly honest, I finished some very, very old whiskies, and the reason I finished them, I mean, I've put, a, 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 and, and, and some people, Kind of draw breath or are quite surprised. I, I put a 30 year old Buna Haben in New Oak, um, brand new oak. But I suppose in my experience, um, you don't tend to get whiskey sitting around for an awful long time in exciting casks. You know, a, a Madeira or a, Mas a Masala or a, a Fino or a, you know, they tend to get to an agent and people want them, people want to consume them. So the ones that tend to sit for a long, long time might just be refills, you know, it could be a hogshead refill, it could be, you know, something not particular, it doesn't make it a bad whiskey, it just might not be doing that new make spirit justice, and, and you know, I've, I've, I've tried whiskies at 25, 30, 35 years that have been in pretty standard wood, and, and it's a shame because I think you're doing the whiskey a disservice, there's nothing particularly wrong with it, um, it just is, doesn't sing, it's not particularly exciting. And, uh, you know, it's, it, it's extensible, what can we do? And, and, and taking that, the Buna Haben was a great, a, a great example, just putting it into some new oak just seemed to refresh it a bit, just seemed to bring that spirit, add a dimension to it. And, and I think that, that doing that, 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 there's no shame in it. We're not trying to, we're actually trying to work hard to bring an extra dimension of the whiskey to the consumer. It's not about hiding stuff. In my experience, um, I have to say, guys, it's very difficult to hide a bad whiskey. A bad whiskey is, you know, if it's been in a, a sour cask, or you, you're never going to hide those notes. Um, you know, if, if there was something wrong with the new make spirit, it's going to be very, very difficult to hide those notes. But, um, you know, I wouldn't want to, to go back to my original point, I wouldn't want to... You know, a 30-year-old whiskey, a 35-year-old whiskey, a 40-year-old whiskey is going to carry a heavy price point. And I wouldn't want to undersell that to the consumer by something that they would try and think, you know, that's not as nice as I thought it would be. So that's that's me for finishing. It's not about covering up. It's, it's just trying to bring the best out of the spirit for the consumer. Um, you know, and, and it's, I don't think... Uh, I, 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 I or any of my colleagues would put our name to something that we, we wouldn't be desperately proud of of putting out into the into the marketplace, you know. So it's it's a controversial view. I can understand why people think, "What well, are you trying to hide something?" You know, but, but we're not. We just want the consumer to have the best possible, um, you know, opportunity to enjoy uh, the, the, the 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 whiskey we think it should be. You know, it should be drunk. So that that's my view that there may be others who think differently um but but it's it's honest for me i wear my heart on my sleeve when it comes to whiskey uh, i i truly believe the right thing to do is try and get the whiskey you know to, to sing as loudly as it possibly can at your opinion what is the perfect cask oh right eh uh, in my opinion i i can't see past a well matured sherry uh, you know, an Oloroso, a PX, um, you know, if it's some absolutely beautiful Pedro Jimenez. So when it comes to, when it comes to, uh, when it comes to drinks, I have quite a sweet tooth. When it comes to food, I'm the opposite, actually, but I do like a sweeter whiskey. And uh, an Oloroso or, or PX finish is lovely, but matured even better. Um, I really do enjoy those. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but in technically, uh, what is the really good cask? Oh, I see. Okay. Um, I mean, I suppose when, when it's about building up a, a, a relationship with a supplier. Um, so, you know, you, you, want to, you want to understand that 
uh, the suppliers of the casks will be will, will be giving you what you've agreed, what you've asked for. Um, you know, you want a cask that is going to be well coopered. Um, you, you want, you know, it's, it's getting, you know, uh, nice solid end, strong staves, good hoops. Um, and, and, and you want the cast to perform well over the over the course of the maturation. There are a million factors, of course, whether it's, you know, the corner of the warehouse you put it in, the weather over a summer, over a winter, how that cask will perform. But I think, uh, you know, we've, we've developed, any company I've worked with have developed well-established relationships with, with suppliers of casks. So it's about building that up, um, allowing the the... the the, the cast supplier to know what you expect from that cast, the standards you expect, the specification of the cask, and, and delivering um, and, and, and supplying that. You know, it's it's uh, um, a bit like everything else. You know, you get you get the odd bad cask through, but but uh, it's it's a bit a good cask is about a good relationship. It's as mm. simple as that. If you've got good relationships with good suppliers, you will have good casks. Mm. If you, they understand what you need and what you want, then that, to my mind, is the secret. Well, next good. question comes from the previous. Do you think uh, today the industry faces casks crisis? I, I, Demand I think on casks is high, supply is limited, and so on. Absolutely, and, and I think the, the the strength to understanding. So, so the Martini case have, uh, I suppose, a bit of an ace up their sleeve insofar as we, you know, for example, for port casks, where the company owns a port uh, manufacturer, so we get casks direct from them. Um, but but again, it's about having well-established relationships uh, with with suppliers, and and if you have those well-established relationships, um, you should be okay for a supply of casks. But I agree that you know coming new into the industry, it's it's going to be challenging to build those relationships and and establish those relationships and establish those supplies of of much-needed casks. But of course, casks are expensive, and um, you know, we, we do need to use we do need to use casks three four times over the course of their of their lifetime because uh, if we continually bought new casks every year, they would become even rarer. Um, the industry would become less sustainable, and and of course those those massive costs would eventually have to be passed on to the consumer as well. So there are a number of things at play where we need to manage our inventory um, carefully, and 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 we need to manage the, the the quality of our liquid carefully, such that we can we can use casks um, time and time again. Whilst as I mentioned, keeping these um, well established relationships and supply routes um, open. Hmm. Who is the key supplier of cask for Lenore Distillery? So we, we have a number of uh, of, of uh, suppliers um, in France. We have a company called h &E who will supply us with wine cask, a company called uh, Alter Oak who will supply us with wine cask. We have um, Kelvin Cooperage in Kentucky um, and uh, Rodriguez as well in Spain who will sell us, uh, who will supply us with, uh, with sherry cask. So we do have a number and, and it's interesting because because a couple of those suppliers can, um, you know, if we have difficulty with one, can 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 supply. So it's not only about having single suppliers of single cast types, but equally allowing having a couple of key suppliers who can who can give you a variety of cast types should you need them. So um, again, you know, it's it's uh, um, you know I've I've only been with the business a few months now, so it's it's still establishing and building up those those relationships. Is is the new the build the business has these well-established relationships. But of course, I'm still building these relationships with the suppliers as I meet and talk to them for, for the first time. Kelvin I've used when I was with Distel, Rodriguez I've used when I was with Distel, Alter Oak I've used. So there are some established relationships there, but uh, it's always good to, to meet and, 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 and speak to different people and, and you know try and spread the risk uh, in the event someone is, is, is unable to supply. So, uh, so yes, yeah, it's, it's uh, um, forever developing these new relationships where we can. And of course, there are lots and lots. You know, I mean, think you know, um, LinkedIn is a is a is a is a fantastic format. The number of times people are contacting me, you know, to say, would you be interested in these casts? So, so there does seem to be a lot of a lot of suppliers out there in, in a consistent supply. If you if you look and and like say, develop and build the right relationships. So the next question: Do you plan to change something in Glenmore range and approach, or want to keep the things as they are? Well, it's, it's interesting because it, you have to keep 
in touch. So whilst we have very established lines with the classic range and we have very established lines with the, the heritage range, you know, it's, it's about keeping in touch with what people want to buy. And, you know, and, 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 and as consumers' tastes evolve, I suppose, um, then we are going to have to look and, and, and review and see what our strategy is. Now, at the minute, where classic and heritage is concerned, we're, we're not planning any any major changes. Um, you know, there, there, are, there are some very nice expressions um, and, and, you know, they sell well. So no no immediate changes there. But the great thing we have um, is, is the curiosity range and, and, and the warehouse one range. And this allows... You know, it basically allows me to run free. Um, you know, myself and my colleague Ian Down, and uh, you know, our, our global brand ambassador, uh, allows us to run free and and, and pick anything from a, a variety of, of of beautiful spirit we have down there. So that will always evolve and change annually. But like I say, it's important with the classic and heritage range. Whilst they're well established, we need to keep. Um, you know, we need to keep in tune with consumer tastes and and and, and what they're buying, and of course, keeping a a keen eye on, on what our inventory can continue to, to supply because of course whiskey's a um you know a great thing for um yeah you having to predict what tastes will be 12 15 18 years into the future so it's not an easy thing to do so no heel wholesale changes at the minute but i i wouldn't say you know i wouldn't say that uh, we aren't going to make changes in the future like it's always always worth keeping an eye on what's selling and and what, what people are buying Mm. Clear. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, by the way, what about uh, whiskey future? Yeah. Uh, where are the ways to find something new for customer? At your yeah. It's it's interesting. It's <clears throat> you know we, we we only have three raw materials, if you like. You know, and and and, and you know we only have uh, you know cereal uh, um, for, for for malt whiskey, um, malty barley. And, and yeast and, and, and water. I think the, the, the big challenge for the industry over the coming years is less about how the product's made um, and, and more about the, the, the sustainability of the product for me, if you like. You know, I think the, I think the industry has to get much more in tune with, uh, with the resources we use, with the energy we consume, and, and we need to understand how we do that better. Um, so I think, in, in my mind, uh, because as I mentioned earlier, it's a, we don't want to lose track of the tradition of whiskey making. I think that's very, very important. It, it, it's certainly done here at Glen Murray, and it certainly was the case um, with Distel. Uh, you know, I, I think that um, it would sadden me if, if all of a sudden all distilleries turned into computer-controlled, um, you know, processes with, with one man at the helm. Um, I think it's very, very important that we, whilst we retain the, uh, the traditional skills we need to we need to make sure that we do that in a sustainable fashion we need to make sure that we limit our impact in the environment and i think that's what the biggest changes will come you know with the water we consume and the energy we consume uh you know and using more in innovative engineering techniques to make, to make that reality and of course the, the skill of distillers as well we're, we're consuming less water i think that's where the changes will come more than more than anything else and we do have strict strict targets to meet about the amount of water we can we can consume as well mm -hmm. uh, do you have any plans for some experience or uh, for some interesting experiments on glen Murray? for example a uh, long fermentation time maybe some interesting uh, variety of uh, barley Interestingly enough, no plans just now. Now, I don't have too big an, an impact on, on what happens um, in, in the distilling side of things anymore. I have a colleague that looks after that for me. But, of course, when your brands are as popular as they are now, uh, we have to make sure that uh, we, we, we service those and we have to make sure that we have the, the, the inventory for the future laid down such that we can sustain those brands. So I think it's, it's always getting more and more difficult and, and you know we trade a lot of spirit within the industry as well um because of course we don't own the number of distilleries that go into into some of our, our, our blended products we need to we need to trade and buy and sell spirit with uh, with industry competitors so you know it, 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 the, the opportunities to, to to make different spirit types are always always uh always getting more and more difficult so it's not something we have an opportunity to do just now um but Certainly something that I would like to be involved in. I always hoped I would get the opportunity with the Stell, but again, um, simply because of the demand for the product, um, you, you, you don't get the opportunity to, to stray too far from it. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Sadly, sadly. What's your favorite whiskey style? Pity, unpity, sherry, bourbon. Nah, well, I, I, I think I think chaps have already mentioned it, that, that my favorite would serve. I don't I don't mind pity whiskey. Um, my my, I, my preference would always be unpitied, but I think I've said in a number of tastings that sometimes the you know the the, the weather, um, time of year, time of day, all influence what you and 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 you know you guys um, in, in in Russia will know more than most what winter's like, and and come winter, you know, a nice peaty dram is is just what you need to warm you up. So it's it's always difficult to see any given time what, what do you like, but in the summer months, um, again unpeated, I'm not gonna you know uh, something that's that's sherried or you know, a, a, an interesting um, finish, you know, maybe sort of like a fortified wine or a, a Marsala or a, or a Madeira, I think have just beautiful notes that work well with with, uh, with, with, with some particular whiskies. So rather than, I mean, I would always default, you know, I, can, I can't really see past anything that, that, that is a good uh, sherry maturation. Um, but, uh, you know, that, again, the, the time of day, the time of year, I mean, I've even seen, and I've experimented with tasting notes, tasting notes you did in winter and, and, you know, maybe in preparation for a release. And you actually come back to talk about that release in summer and you're picking up something completely different. You know, it's it's really, really interesting. So it's, uh, yeah, I mean, my favourite whiskey would always be something matured and sherry, but, but again, it can just be down to how you feel at that time of day about, about what you what you fancy. It's, it's always so. What I'm saying here is always have a well stocked cabinet. Always have a well stocked cabinet, and uh, you you won't go far wrong. Hmm. Uh, do you have a personal whiskey collection? I, I well, yes, I have a, I have two or three. So um, it's it's interesting that that. You know, I'm very lucky to work in the industry I do. Um, so I have a, a small whiskey cabinet at home. It's an old barrel, um, and, and, and I keep the kind of day-to-day -day stuff in there, um, you know, just the 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 day-to-day -day drams. And um, I then have a another cupboard with something that, you know, you might bring out at the weekend. And But, but I keep in the attic the really, really nice stuff. And, and, and that's the, the kind of stuff you just like to collect. And, and maybe one day you'll, 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 you'll crack it open. But it has to be kept in the attic so that I can't get too easily. <laughs> because if I got to it too easily, I would just drink it. So, yeah, and there are some lovely expressions up there. Some, some, some great expressions and great memories of, of you know, and, and my times with Diageo and, and, and with Distel as well. So, you know, there's not just about keeping it with a view to someday selling it. You, you want it so special that you either want to keep it because it, 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 you know, it, it produces a memory in your head of, of, of a particular occasion, or um, you, know, you want to keep it for a particularly rare occasion where you would, you would open a nice bottle. So yes, it's, it's always nice to, 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 keep, uh, to keep whiskies there, but if I, uh, if I drank everything I have, I, I wouldn't be very well. I'd be ill, I think. So it's always, it's much wiser to collect it and keep it away out the, up in the attic out the way. Uh, what do you think that uh, people prefer do not drink whiskey, but uh, sell and buy it? Well, it's a, it's a it's... kind of business. It is, and it's it's it isn't. I would I would criticise them for doing that. Do you know, it's 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 like uh, cars or property, or you know, if everything's collectible and, and there's a market for it. I know a lot of people uh, don't particularly like it because it maybe keeps the the the, the genuine whiskey. Um, uh, you know, a. People genuinely enjoy whiskey and love to drink it may price them out the market, but it's 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 not illegal to do. It's difficult to stop, and 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 it is it is what it is. I think you know it's it's uh, it's it's something that you can buy and sell for a profit, like everything else. It's it is what it is. Okay. It's, Our next question: What was the, is the most remarkable whiskey you have ever tasted? Uh, do you know? So I was very very lucky. Um, to taste a, what would have been a 48-year-old Tobermory um, fully matured in uh, Oloroso casks, and it was absolutely breathtakingly good. It was beautiful. Um, I think it can be luck 
And I think that luck comes down to when the spirit goes in the cask, where does that cask sit? You know, what, what are the what are the weather cycles? How many summers? How many winters? What, I, I, I genuinely believe it's it's luck that some will become overly oaky. Um, you know, some maybe the 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 uh, you know the cask can maybe impart some 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 notes that aren't particularly desirable, and and, and I think one in a million at that age just hits the mark and work, and it was absolutely it was only a sip, but it was absolutely beautiful. It was a really nice whiskey. Um, like I say, older doesn't always make better, in my opinion. You know, it's some some work we've done, um, some work I did. Uh, with, with, with Distel on peated whiskey and Rioja casks, very young whiskey, it just worked and it was beautiful and it was really, really nice. You know, so whilst, um, you know, I, I, I'm not the biggest fan of peated expression, I, I, I will drink them. Um, you, 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 you know, you sometimes find something particularly young that just works particularly well with a specific cask. And, and in my mind, that's almost a, a holy grail. Uh, you know, we'd unpeated expressions in the same casks for the same period of time and they just weren't working um but but you know when you find something that that that, that just works and and i think that's the, the the exciting thing that i have um in the time that sits in front of me with with lamartini Kez is that that freedom and that opportunity to to try um you know different cast types with with with, with different spirit types and just see what what works um and of course, it's not that things don't work. There are just some work incredibly well. You, you know the expression. There are no such. There's no such things as bad whiskey. Just some are better than others. And finally, finally, maybe a few words for Russian-speaking whiskey lovers. Of course, yeah, it's it's it, it's something I'd, I'd thought about, and, and and I couldn't actually decide what I wanted to say, which was which was a bit odd. But you know, I think it's fantastic to get the opportunity, um, you know, to speak. The Russian whiskey lovers, and and you know you're not a small country. There are lots of you, and uh, I think it's fantastic that that you know you have an, an appreciation for for not just the, the, the not just for 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 Glen Murray or not just for La Martini Kez, but but you know for the country as a whole. And 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 we're just grateful. I think that you know we're able to offer kind of Scotland's gift to the world um, by way of whiskey. So do you know my my. my uh, uh, you know, my message to, to, to our Russian friends and, and, and our Russian whiskey drinkers is we're so grateful for it as a nation. Um, you know, we're, we're so glad we can offer you this gift and please just, just keep enjoying it for, for years to come and we will work our hardest to ensure that we will, we will give you whiskies and expressions that we'll, you will continue to enjoy for many, many decades. 